Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Saturday, June 8, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Numbers chapter 12, reading from verse 1 to 13, and it says, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord had heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house? Who is faithful in all mine house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall be shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherefore we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Amen. We thank God this morning for his words. And this is an important lesson for us to learn this morning. We see why it is not a good thing to tear down people, especially the people of God. Because here, Miriam, she was going around complaining to Aaron. The two of them was there. And she was talking about how apparently Moses married this Ethiopian woman. So I guess she felt like Moses shouldn't have married this woman. I don't know what was going through her head. And so she was tearing down the man behind his back. The man who she supposed to be giving her support to and ultimately her support to God. She's supposed to be helping to hold his hand up. Both her and Heron. And here they are tearing him down and his family talking about basically who is Moses is him alone God can talk to God can talk to we too he's not that special and I'm just paraphrasing now because we know how we can go on sometimes sometimes if we feel like we don't get something that we are supposed to get and someone else supposedly get that something we speak so harshly against them and we try to tear them down and we try to make them look bad before everybody because we want to make their reputation stink in the hair so many times we do stuff like that even in the church how many times we see people fighting for offices and the sad thing about it that even when they get the office they are not able to function in the office 
but yet still they don't want anybody else to have it. It's just they just want the position to say they are in um, a position of authority. Just like some corrupt government. Do you think they really care about the people? They just want the power and the prestige and the financial backing that comes with it. They don't care about people, but that's a story for another time. So, God saw what was happening and he was not pleased. And so he decided that he's going to take action. And so he called a meeting with all three of them. And he came down and then he called Miriam and Aaron and, his, Aaron and he says to them that, Who are you to question who I talk to from who I don't talk to? Is there anyone among you that I should talk to? If there's a prophet among you, I would talk to the prophet. Moses is much more than that. And that is why I speak to him by word of mouth. So you can't tell me who I must talk to. And that is it, you know. We, we like to tell God what he must do. And we are not willing to listen to what he tells us to do. So it's like we are give God orders. It wasn't their place to question God's method and who he cho chose to do his work. And even if the person mess up, is not for you and I to attack the person. Instead, what we should do is find a way to lift that person up back where they are to be. Not tear them down further. Any dealing with supposed to go on, excuse my language, God will take care of it. God will draw them up. You and I responsibility is to help to hold their hand up. When they are falter, correct them. That's what Paul says. Not to tear them down and bury them further. Right? Show them some grace and some mercy. No. If they choose to respond positively to that, then you have gained your brother back or your sister. But if not, then what else can you do? You just have to let God deal with it. And so God did draw them up and he put them in their place and he said, look here, man, you guys make me so angry right now. And he just left. He left. You know, I, what I love about Moses the Bible said that he was such a meek man. He was humble. And that is why I always say, any leader who do not possess the characteristics of humility is already a failed leader. You already fail. Because leading is not an easy thing to do. And you have to learn humble yourself even when the people get on your nerve you can't go off like a time ban you have to use wisdom and you have to approach the situation with tact and to make sure that you don't cause further damage to the situation your responsibility is to make sure the outcome of the situation is better than how it started and trust me, you have some, some leaders that then just have a short fuse. And, it's, and as them drop them broke, they're not even cracking up. Broke. You don't want to get on their bad side. Because the moment you cross them, it's over for you. And they are not afraid to let you know. But Moses wasn't this kind of person. And I got to love that about him. That he allowed the Holy Spirit to calm him and don't tell me now that he got upset and strike the rock so he wasn't all that you don't tear him down with that one sin yes he made a mistake and all because of these stubborn people and he somehow lost his senses for a while and he did what God told him not to do all he made was a mistake 
So don't dwell on the fact that he struck the rock. Hmm? Don't dwell on it. Because what? You and I, how many times we have struck the rock? How many times? So many times and not a lot of folks know that we are striking the rock. But God knows that you're striking the rock. And so God was very upset with them and so God dealt with them. God said, look here man. Mm -mm. This is it. This is it. Obviously you too don't understand what I am about. And your pride and your selfishness and your jealousy and whatever other emotion that you are conjuring up against my servant it's clear to me that you need to be dealt with and so is after he left Miriam was struck with leprosy hmm? because she was the ringleader in the conversation and so I guess that's why God used her as the example. And so she was punished for what she did. And Aaron came begging and said, Oh Lord, you know, we have done foolishly. Of course you have done foolishly. David said, touch not the Lord's anointing. And I'm not saying that there aren't leaders who mess up and mess up really bad but i'm saying how we go about dealing with it should be the approach of restoration not condemnation they are still chosen by god and in spite of their errors and their mistakes we should pray for them that the Holy Spirit will continue speaking to them that they will turn back to their senses. But, you know, the interesting thing about this too, I want us to, to get, is that when these two folks committed this sin against God and did what they did, the same person who they were backbiting and talking about and tearing down is the very person that went and did what? Pray for them. Plead for them. Beg God to heal her. The same person, you know? And that's an example to us too. A lot of the time, the people that we try to tear down are the very people that sometimes come straight back to our rescue. And some of us should be ashamed should be a shame but not even then we don't have any shame as my grandmother said they shame a tree dead they don't even have the courtesy to say they are sorry such arrogance but that is why i also love the verse that says vengeance is mine said the lord i will repay so you don't take it upon yourself Whoever want to talk about you, let them talk. You don't do a thing. Pray for them while you pray for yourself. You get me? So do the right thing. Don't join them because the moment you stoop to their level, you have no card in your deck anymore. You are just like them. And that is why I emphasize that humility a leader must possess and if you are struggling with that then i ask that you pray earnestly that god will give you that fruit the fruit of humility because the responsibility that you have as a leader is no small feat and if you cannot walk in favor with god you will never walk in favor with man you get what I'm saying? So, may you and I ask the Holy Spirit this morning to help us to be humble and to walk faithfully in His way 
and help us that we will not tear down those whom we have chosen to lead, but that we'll pray for them, that they will continue to lead his people where he wants them to go. And those that are faltering, we will pray and help them to get back off the ground. Amen. So God bless you all. And may you continue to pray for each other and pray for me as well. That we will continue to be faithful in Jesus name. Amen.